Come and visit the new Ajib Bank today. Ajib is the only Islamic bank in the Gambia. We offer Sharia compliance services, products and financing modes. Ajib have invested in ultra-modern technology in the state-of-the-art core Islamic banking software, Aymal. Ajib ATMs are located in our branches at Banjo, New Joshuan, Brikama, Basse, Qsel Head Office and Busubi Turntable. You can check your balance, withdraw cash, get your mini statement and much more. Ajib also provides 24-7 internet banking which offers you the comfort of banking from your office or your homes. Come and visit the new Ajib Bank today and enjoy our services delivered by a team of banking professionals. For a limited time, you can get an Ajib ATM card absolutely free. For more information, contact us on 346-6666 or 327-7777. Ajib, your partnership bank. Thank you for joining us on our QTV Business and Economy Program. The Business and Economy Program is intended to promote the ideals of a corporate Gambia identity with the objective of forging partnerships through dialogue between the public and the private sector, civil society organizations and the international community. We continue our dialogue with the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. And today we shall be talking about a very important topic, mm -hmm. again in relation to the private sector. The tool and framework of public-private partnership mm -hmm. and state-owned enterprises and the role they're supposed to play in our efforts and endeavors to fast track the economic development aspirations of this country. What is it that this is being done at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, in particular at the Directorate of Public-Private Partnership and State-Owned Enterprises, what is being done at that unit to help ensure that the role the private sector is supposed to play is realized in our economic development aspirations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what would inform our discussion over the next one hour. And to help us do this, I have invited a special and a distinguished guest in the person of Mr. Mustafa Samate, who is the director at the Directorate of Public-Private Partnership and Public Enterprises. Mr. Samate, it's a pleasure to have you on the program, and welcome to the Business and Economy. Thank you, sir, uh, Mr. Roberts. We are pleased to be here uh, to represent the Ministry of Finance. I'm uh, here speaking on behalf of my bosses also, uh, you know, uh, the Minister, Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs. Mr. Mam Rejai, who is also very passionate about the topic of private participation uh, in infrastructure and public service delivery, which PPC is out to address. Mm -hmm. And also on behalf of the permanent secretaries, Maud K. Seka mm -hmm. and other gay, and of course, uh, other senior personnel at the ministry, mm -hmm. and my colleague directors. So uh, we cannot all come. So I'm here as the director uh, to participate uh, and give you our views. But you've raised. Uh, should I continue? Or mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, on, on the issue of what we are doing mm -hmm. uh, to bring in private participation, uh, uh, exactly that. I mean, <coughs> forces, uh, as we all know, the NDP, uh, I think the second pillar after governance, the first pillar is governance, the second pillar is private sector uh, development. So it's, a very, it's very high on the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we come to PPP specifically, uh, we are out to address private participation in uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and public service delivery. Mm -hmm. The things that government were supposed to do, but uh, maybe we don't have the capacity, whether it's the budget or, or the capital or the expertise to do it uh, and also the speed to do it mm -hmm. properly. So uh, in, in that line, government set up the Directorate of Public-Private Partnership a few years ago, not too long. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a view to help scale up, put in the frameworks 
right, and, and help scale up uh, private participation in infrastructure. Uh, I mean, until then, the issue of private participation, uh, you know, in government has been here since uh, the medieval ages. Uh, it's not new, mm -hmm. but I mean, the issue is how do we organize ourselves? How do we formalize it in such a way that mm -hmm. It can be, uh, it can, it can engender confidence, right? Mm -hmm. To private sector confidence mm -hmm. to participate. So when we started, the first thing we did is uh, we developed uh, a national policy on public-private partnership mm -hmm. uh, to, to clear the direction of travel. Uh, I mean, what is the objectives? Uh, what are we trying to do? Uh, who does what? The institutional framework. Uh, is it solicited? Is it unsolicited proposal? Mm -hmm. What approach should we use? Mm -hmm. All those steps are clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, we also develop the operational guidelines for PPPs in Gambia. Mm -hmm. And we work closely. I mean, all these instruments were developed working closely with PF, uh, the infrastructure facility at the World Bank, mm -hmm. and also the World Bank. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we collaborated with the World Bank to screen and identify 10 priority projects, mm -hmm. which most, uh, a few of them, one of them is already operational, mm -hmm. uh, the Gamsuit project. Uh, the all, some of the others are being prepared, including the Trans Gambia Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, where we right now is, uh, yes, all that is done, of course, with challenges mm -hmm. in terms of practice. I mean, the practice is not marching uh, policy prescriptions, mm -hmm. uh, but those are cultural issues. Uh, so what we are trying to do, what we are doing right now to cement these gains that we have registered mm -hmm. uh, is to come up with uh, a PPP law Mm -hmm. We've worked with Expertise France, a French agency for development, mm -hmm. to, get, uh, to get us, a, so they've submitted a draft public-private partnership bill, mm -hmm. which we are hoping to validate uh, next month in February, mm -hmm. uh, the, the week of 19 February. But I mean, notwithstanding, contracts are being signed, uh, PPP contracts, by government. I mean, uh, are they following the right steps? Uh, not, not best practice. Mm -hmm. uh, the PPP process has six steps. Mm -hmm. Right. The first step is what? The screening and identification. The and then the appraisal. Mm -hmm. And then the structuring. Mm -hmm. And then the tendering. Mm -hmm. And then contract contracting and contract management. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, you know, all yes, contracts are being signed, but they're not fully in due process and that's why all the challenges that come out from mm -hmm. you know the contracts, some of which we are aware of mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, already in the public domain. So uh, but again the issue is this, I mean Infrastructure is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. PPP is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to follow the best practice, all these tests will take time. Mm -hmm. You screen, you identify, you appraise. It might take six months, right? Mm -hmm. and you bring in a transaction advisor to structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then tendering, mm -hmm. it will take a few months. Mm -hmm. So a minimum 18 months, two years. Mm -hmm. and, and the issue is uh, politi politicians have a shorter life frame, right? So, uh, I mean, it's a cultural revolution mm -hmm. that we are trying to push. In the, what Gambia knows is that I want water, I come to QCL uh, or, or natural water and pay and collect the water. Mm -hmm. This is a different game. Mm -hmm. You want water, you can still have the water, but you don't have to pay for it now. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. We're pushing, mm -hmm. but you know, the challenges are also very, very serious, uh, it, ranging from political intervention, uh, yes. Uh, corruption and all kinds of mm. things, right? But 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 that, that's that's it. That's the reality. We're pushing. We're pushing. Yeah. You 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 yeah. made some very important um, points, and um, actually you've really kickstart us in terms of the discussion. Um, uh, you mentioned the two um, fundamental pillars of the pillars of the NDP, governance being one, and PPP, or the private sector well, the uh, I mean, um, participation yeah. um, being the second one. Mm. And naturally, that dovetails very well mm. with the mandate that you have been assigned at the Ministry mm. of Finance and Economic Affairs mm. under the Directorate of Public-Private Partnerships and um, Public Enterprises. But what I want to ask is, um, uh, you did mention that practice in terms of operationalization of PPP it's not matching policy prescriptions. And of course, yes, we understand that starting off, there'll be hiccups, there'll be challenges because you're learning the ropes, mm. navigating mm. 
um, the policy guidelines until we get to the point where that is perfected, then perhaps mm. we can begin to see best practice as you alluded to. Mm. But the question I want to ask is, why is it that perhaps the policy prescriptions are not being met? And what is it that you are doing at the unit to help bring about a change in that perspective so that gradually, as time unfolds, we would begin to see best practice as long as PPP is concerned? Okay, uh, why people are not following these steps? Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, I, I think the analogy is, you know, you have, uh, you know, we, we know where we're coming from. We many years of bad governance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have a badly behaved child for many years, mm -hmm. and then you want them to start behaving properly. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so uh, I'll give you specific examples. Mm -hmm. For example, if if uh, the policy, national policy on PPP dictates that if the project is, for example, solicited mm -hmm. uh, uh, proposal, meaning that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the idea originates from uh, uh, the, an implementing agency, government implementing agency such as NAWE. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step, you know, it was submit to us for uh, a review. Mm -hmm. If we think it makes sense, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we now go to the next step, which is that project committees are formed. Mm -hmm. And then if, you know, thereafter, the next step is transaction advisories appointed mm -hmm. and so on and so on and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. But what do you find? You will find that, you know, right now, these, if in these proposals are going to different places, mm -hmm. some of them, you have some sending their proposals directly to the office of the president, mm -hmm. some sending their proposals directly to the relying ministries, mm -hmm. So I'm sending their proposals directly to Gaipa, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, uh, I mean, uh, we, we recognize the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, and there is no, uh, everyone would tell you, mm -hmm. uh, right now to do a project in Gambia is a bit of a challenge, mm -hmm. because the framework and people's understanding of the framework, different mm -hmm. frameworks, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is slightly uh, below Mm -hmm. what is desired, the optimal mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing to address this is we say, okay, now let's move from policy mm -hmm. to making it a legal instrument. Mm -hmm. Because if people don't comply with policy, I, I can't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But if, if it is the law, mm -hmm. then you, at least you have something to fall back, fall back on. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's what we are doing mm -hmm. on that front. So, so, pr so pretty much what you are saying is the way in which people have been accustomed to doing things. When, when I say people here, I'm referring to institutions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're finding it difficult to adapt to what is being proposed now. So your unit is the central coordinating unit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, instead of PPP projects or whatever proposals that are brought into the country by way of investments, it should now come to the Ministry of Finance and then you coordinate from that angle Involving everybody that needs to be involved, rather than it's perhaps going to yes. now. If I should use that as an, if I, if I should use them as an yeah. example. Yeah. Okay. So, so just to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, investments have many facets, right, mm -hmm. and different types. Mm -hmm. uh, our interest is specifically on public-private partnership projects or mm -hmm. investments, mm -hmm. uh, and we, yes, you right, like rightly identify, mm -hmm. we are the center of excellence for mm -hmm. PVPs here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we support and promote mm -hmm. PPPs in Gambia. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the project is PPP, that's where it should come to. Okay. And then all the steps that we agree in the national policy that's approved mm -hmm. for 2015 to 2020 mm -hmm. should, should be followed. Mm -hmm. right? But people also for many reasons, uh, because we, well we have a, di a dynamic team mm -hmm. of about uh, 15 prof staff. Mm -hmm. Uh, 13 professional mm -hmm. and uh, to support. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lawyer mm -hmm. in house. We have uh, financial analyst. Mm -hmm. We have economist. Mm -hmm. We have a diverse team, and they all encourage to operate professionally. Mm -hmm. I don't interfere with what they have, what they work and mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. But people also recognize it. So usually, uh, some might look and see that uh, you know where the easy inroads are, mm -hmm. and they go that way instead of coming through. Cool, yeah. yeah, because mm -hmm. because they know that these guys really. Scrutinize. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. scrutinize mm -hmm. and they intend to do what is right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and 
thank God uh, we, we are not, as a day, involved. Mm -hmm. Or we are not known to be involved in any mm -hmm. fizzy or unprofessional activities. So. Actually, this, yeah. that, 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 that brings me to my next question. And I'm glad you made the point that you have a staff count of 15, 13 mm -hmm. professionals and two support. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's not a small unit, it's a big unit. Directorate, it's a directorate. Uh, it's, a, it's a directorate. Yeah. Um, it, it, it brings me to, um, to my next question, and that is, when the idea and the concept of PPP was being conceptualized, um, I mean, I remember this very well because I was involved. Um, mm -hmm. The idea emanated from Gaipa at the time. Now, yes, at the time, the minister at the time, and if I remember right, it was Abdul Koli, had thought that it was best for the PPP unit to reside at the Ministry of Finance. But given the staff complement of the directorate now, and I also hear that of talks of setting up the PPP directorate and public enterprises as an agency. It's a commission, yeah. Yeah, I mean, is the PPP unit better served in terms of its interest and mandate residing under the Ministry of Finance or will it, will it gradually have to become um, siphoned off or separated from the Ministry of Finance for it to stand as an agency on its own? What okay. is your thinking and what is your take o on that? Okay, uh, first mm -hmm. on the origins, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was in there mm -hmm. uh, 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 at the time you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I was actually at the Central Bank where mm -hmm. I worked for seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, of course when I came in, mm -hmm. when I was seconded to set up the depart di department, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did was of course to review everything that transpired. Mm -hmm. uh, what you will find is, and this paper is available, I can share it with you. Mm -hmm. uh, PF did a con assessment. Mm -hmm. PPIF. Yes, PF. PPAIF. P yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They did an uh, World Bank, it's, a, it's, it's an World Bank arm agency. of the World Bank mm -hmm. agency. Mm -hmm. They did an assessment mm -hmm. of PPP in Gambia, mm -hmm. and actually they recommend mm -hmm. that uh, for the fiscal risk issue, mm -hmm. it's best house mm -hmm. within the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the recommendation that was uh, being implemented. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking for the guys that decided that. It wasn't my decision. Mm -hmm. It was decided upon, mm -hmm. and I was hired to come and lead the uh, you know, to spearhead the implementation. Mm -hmm. But this is what happened. Mm -hmm. But I mean, globally, mm -hmm. there is no, uh, you find PPP departments in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, in some countries, uh, like Malaysia, you have it at the Office of the President. Mm -hmm. In other countries, Ministry of Finance. In other countries, you have it in, you know, in, in different places. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but what you will find, and actually the economist, mm -hmm. Uh, the Economist, which is the leading uh, economic journal across the world, mm -hmm. they confirmed this to me. I did an interview with them. They mm -hmm. were due to publish that this year. Mm -hmm. Well, usually, and, and they also read countries. Mm -hmm. But from my interactions with them, what, what they say is that if, even if the PPP unit is under the office of the president, mm -hmm. they rate you, rate you low. Mm -hmm. So you get more rating if you are under the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. And you will agree with me that, look, Every contract mm -hmm. has fiscal considerations. Of course. Serious ones. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a debt issue, whether it's tax issues, whether it's uh, you know, contingent liabilities, mm -hmm. and all these things, right? Just mm -hmm. one contract, you get it wrong, mm -hmm. without factoring the fiscal risk, mm -hmm. can derail the country's economic program entirely. Mm -hmm. Forget mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a specific example. Mm -hmm. uh, most of us have heard about the issues we have with the Kinesis contract, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know what happened? The partners actually threatened to walk away if government was to proceed with that deal. Mm -hmm. That's how serious contracting can, can have implications mm -hmm. on. So it's not about uh, you know, the niceties or where one wants to be. Mm -hmm. It's about what benefits the country. The and what is optimal. What is optimal. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, if, if truly we want value, mm -hmm. if truly we want and given our challenges and peculiarities, mm -hmm. and the even collaborate inter-agency collaborations, mm -hmm. it is going to be, we, even now that we are there, we still have challenges. Mm -hmm. I, imagine if the PPP department was outside, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then uh, you, you enter into all, and even now we see those things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, the Africa 
the biometric passport contract. Mm -hmm. It's a PPP contract uh, mm -hmm. between Yahya Jami and uh, Mohammed Basi as well. Mm -hmm. Right? But what happened? It's only when they came for to claim their tax benefits that we got to know about the contract. Mm -hmm. Right? And imagine those implications mm -hmm. that could have mm -hmm. on, uh, on uh, tax projections and all the other things, right? You, you, made, um, you made a good point in terms of the reason as to why it's housed at the Ministry of Finance. And um, I can't agree with your reasoning. Um, 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 uh, you know, in, uh, I mean, in that regard. But uh, you also mentioned, in terms of contracting, the importance of certain elements, respect for contracts, transparency, and the like, alluding to the Basi issue that you mentioned. I don't know whether it was done with Jame or with the <laughs> government of Jame, but that's, that's, I mean, that's for another discussion. But the point I want to make here is there are key challenges in successfully leveraging public-private partnership frameworks. Mm -hmm. And this is across the globe and it's universal. Mm -hmm. You make reference to the first one, which is respect for contracts. Mm -hmm. And this pretty much underpins private sector confidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. You make reference, or you alluded to the bits regarding transparency when you spoke of the Basi mm -hmm. um, issue, mm -hmm. in which there, of course, were issues of um, transparency and challenges and at all levels of PPP project execution. And also the bit regarding risk mitigation. And here you mention how it is important that if a PPP project is housed on the office of the president, for example, the risk that would be associated with it would be much higher than if it is uh, with the Ministry of Finance. And rightly so, uh, because for obvious- Fiscal risk. I mean, fiscal I mean risk and for ob obvious reasons. Now, in terms of what we are trying to, or what you are trying to achieve, what we are trying to achieve as a country by creating this public-private partnership platform for the private sector to participate, be it local, private, or international private. What is it that we are doing to perhaps help bring about um, enhanced respect for contracts, ensure ensuring transparency, and at the same time to to look at issues of risks associated <coughs> with contracts and mitigating this. And perhaps a practical example you know, would suffice. If we look at what obtained during the level of the um, 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 commission, the commission that just ended, hmm? um, commission of inquiries mm. into the dealings you know, of the former regime, mm. we'll, we, we, we've, we've heard of the Carnegie Minerals issue in which respect for contracts was put in question. Mm -hmm. We can even go as far back as things like Alimenta. We look at issues of transparency on some of these contracts and issues of risks, you know, because in PPP you have various sorts of risks. Mm -hmm. You have country risk, you have business risks, you know, foreign exchange risks, mm -hmm. you name them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even um, um, what we would call um, 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 country level risks mm -hmm. as well in terms mm -hmm. of the ratings of the country. Mm -hmm. So what is it that we are doing as a country to help under your directorate to help address some of these issues which are of concern to the private sector so that the private sector would have that confidence mm -hmm. and comfort to um, tap on the opportunities that PPP provides. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Roberts. First of all, I uh, would say that the new government, mm -hmm. actually, uh, I think we have a lot to be grateful for to the new government mm -hmm. for at least allowing space mm -hmm. and trying to do what is right. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it, it is the intent, and actually this is demonstrated also mm -hmm. in practical cases, mm -hmm. uh, such as the Semlex contract, mm -hmm. where they had a contract with government, and the new government says, you had a contract, mm -hmm. so yes, maybe it wasn't uh, all uh, optimally structured, mm -hmm. so let's renegotiate small, and then but we respect mm -hmm. those contracts. So I think that's evidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of thing sends a signal, to, you know, the investment world mm -hmm. is connected. Mm -hmm. They know things right away, man. They, they don't wait to be told. Mm -hmm. uh, they get this information right away. So the signals are out there that gov this government mm -hmm. intends to respect uh, contract, which is a very important provision, mm -hmm. and property rights. Mm -hmm. uh, for, from, from our standpoint, what we are also doing to inject more confidence, business confidence, mm -hmm. It's like I said, to make these policies and procedures guidelines into a law. Mm -hmm. Make it legal mm -hmm. and say uh, this is it and approved at National Assembly level. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, you know, with, with legal frameworks actually do help to inject investor confidence, mm -hmm. and they have something to fall back to. They want to see that the law protects them, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So, so again, uh, I repeat, uh, we are looking to validate this law. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it 19 February. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually collaborate closely with the Gambia Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. But all the private sector players, uh, including yourselves with your expertise and PPP and, and, uh, and also administration, mm -hmm. we expect your input. Mm -hmm. What we want is a law that works for Gambia. It's not, the law is not for us, mm -hmm. uh, the department level. We want the law that works for Gambia. Mm -hmm. And when we see all these PPPs, one complaint across the world is that is the Westerners that come and take all these big contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, uh, one could argue it's true. Mm -hmm. But also, what we need to do is prepare ourselves as local private sector mm -hmm. and uh, to participate fully. Mm -hmm. Yes, government is committed to uh, the local content mm -hmm. principle, mm -hmm. and we are working with National Assembly to pass such regulation. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need private sector, local private sector also, to be dynamic, to start working together, mm -hmm. uh, because that is also a challenge in this system, mm -hmm. right? We, I don't know of any. Uh, public, you know, PLCs in Gambia, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is limited. You need capital. So we need to find ways of organizing ourselves. Because mm -hmm. some of these, a lot of these contracts are real high value, mm -hmm. which will be difficult to be pursued by an individual businessman or mm -hmm. two, two mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But if we collaborate, mm -hmm. work as a team and mm -hmm. compete mm -hmm. with outsiders, then we stand a chance. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, this will be my advice. You, 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 you made a very important point in yeah. terms of local content, and I totally agree with you. And this has been a point that the private sector has been harping on for the longest. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have our challenges internally as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. And it is very difficult in this country to see like-minded private individuals coming together to create a consortium or create mm -hmm. a company mm -hmm. of which, you know, uh, I mean, even if it's a private limited company. It's mm -hmm. a big challenge in this country. Mm -hmm. What you find is mostly... Um, sole proprietorships mm. or to the best mm. a partnership, mm. but a company that has been created from mm. like-minded Gambians coming together, mm. having trust and doing things is a challenge. Big and challenge. with PPP, as you rightly said, I mean, these are high value mm. projects. So if Gambians or the private sector want to participate in public-private yeah. partnership, then it is high time that we start thinking in those lines and in that direction yeah. so that we can begin to benefit from the local content law that eventually would emanate to help Gambians be part and parcel of big um, public-private partnerships. But then again, uh, let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. um, is that being factored in the law? Say, for yes. example, yes. I mean, is the law going to provide to say um, uh, if a public-private partnership um, project comes on board and Gambians want to participate, then X percentage of that project value would perhaps be um, um, reserved for local content on condition that the local content mm -hmm. is relevant and has the requisite capacity to undertake that bit. Is this, I mean, is that the no, thinking? What, what, I mean, what I mean, I mean, I mean what's the thinking? No, it's uh, exactly that. Mm -hmm. But we are not uh, citing percentages. Okay. We're saying uh, indigenous uh, governments mm -hmm. uh, participate. But, I mean, uh, we will expect that the local content law would take care of the percentages. Okay. All right, that's a separate act. But what we are putting in the law is that, mm -hmm. that the indigenous participation mm -hmm. has to happen mm -hmm. in one way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. What you don't also want to do is tie the hands of uh, people when they want to implement projects. Because mm -hmm. we know, even locally, mm -hmm. we have capacity deficit, mm -hmm. whether in the public sector or the private sector. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so we don't want to do that. But what we're saying, at least, it has to be. It is there. Mm -hmm. But we, again, this is why it's important for the private sector to review this draft bill, mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, and uh, it's available, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and send us their comments, their mm -hmm. inputs. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you one practical example. Take the Transgambia Bridge, for mm -hmm. example, uh, which was inaugurated uh, January 21st. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, is, it was part of the, those projects mm -hmm. that we screened and identified mm -hmm. uh, for PPP mm -hmm. uh, back in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, on a tolling base to toll it and uh, on an O&M contract basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so <coughs> we are still working on this. We've invited Africa Legal Facility mm -hmm. uh, to help us with that transaction advisory role, mm -hmm. uh, working with NRA and Ministry of Works mm -hmm. uh, closely. 
uh, but in the interim, government is doing. It's already toll. Tolls have been charged, mm -hmm. and government is collecting. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what we would expect from zero that is uh, government collection is from maybe zero to two years in mm -hmm. interim strategy. Mm -hmm. What we would expect is that by the time we do all this work and open it up for tender, we hope and pray that Gambian local private sector will organize themselves mm -hmm. to participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, it's, it's one thing for people to, but are we, what are we doing to mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. you know, come so together? Yeah, uh, so it's not, it's not just about talk and saying yeah, yeah, that so the private sector should be the engine of growth of yeah, this economy, yeah, yeah. but the private sector also need to get its act together, prepare itself, come together so that they could latch onto some yeah. of these projects no, and take advantage. I, indeed. You know, yeah. it, engines uh, have many parts. Mm -hmm. So if private sector, government well, private sector is dynamic, mm -hmm. is that, but they're in diverse sectors. Mm -hmm. So if they want to be engine, they need to come together. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know the, all the different parts together. Mm -hmm. That way the vehicle will run faster. Mm -hmm. huh? run faster. Let, let, me, let, me, let me come to some practical aspects of PPP and what your ministry um, has been mandated um, to help um, this country realize. Um, uh, I, and, and, and here I want to look at the municipalities. I mean, if we look at Banyul City Council, we look at Carnival Municipality Council, and we even look at Birkama uh, um, um, area, I mean, I mean, council as well. Um, we see that the issues of garbage disposal, waste management, and construction of feeder roads, and construction and even effective management of public markets is all um, a challenge. Um, one would expect that perhaps um, this might be an opportunity uh, for your directorate working in consort with the uh, municipalities to see how you know PPP projects could be conceived perhaps locally without any international um, engagement or if need be why not where we could begin to implement and help address some of the challenges that the municipalities have what is your take on that and is this something that your ministry is um, eyeing to no, in, in, go in, down in the line. Indeed, Mr. Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not just eyeing it down the line, we're doing something about it. Uh, there are serious challenges at their level, too. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's culture, mm -hmm. whether it's capacity, whether it's uh, you know, corruption, mm -hmm. bad practice, mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So how do we address, also the issue of addresses, lack of addresses uh, in the neighborhoods and things like that. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing about it? Uh, currently, uh, there is a, you know, one uh, uh, deal that is being structured, mm -hmm. uh, PVP basis with the Bikama Area Council, mm -hmm. starting with Bikama Area Council, mm -hmm. uh, because they're the biggest. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, once the systems are all set up, mm -hmm. uh, you know the other municipalities, KMC and Banjul, can plug into the system. Mm -hmm. This is true. Uh, very renowned private sector mm -hmm. uh, players, mm -hmm. uh, global actors, mm -hmm. and it's to do with uh, revenue collections. Mm -hmm. How, because without the financing, mm -hmm. the issues of markets, feeder roads. Uh, you know, right now we all know their collections are be below, uh, below optimal, mm -hmm. but because also they don't know everyone who should pay, mm -hmm. whether it's the house rates, mm -hmm. whether it's the mining fees, sand mining, mm -hmm. whether it's the to hotel fees, and all these things they don't know. Mm -hmm. So what what these guys are doing, uh, and, and it's, uh, the engagement is at, uh, almost as high level. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping the deal will be concluded soon. Uh, but the, uh, my understanding is that the next step is for the, these guys to bring in the drones mm -hmm. that will do the mapping of the whole of the Kawa area council. Mm -hmm. and map out the houses, the streets, mm -hmm. and everything will be, you know, this sophisticated IT system such that, you know, with telephones you will be able to know everyone mm -hmm. who has paid and who has not paid, who lives where. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and, and the, 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 the beauty of that project is such that mm -hmm. yeah, it is expected that the revenues of become an area council will be multiplied threefold, if mm -hmm. not fourfold, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big plus because mm -hmm. then with more revenue they can start taking care of the little other things. Mm -hmm. 
they're quick wins. If sewage, you know, waste management, all these things. But again, uh, take big on area council. If you want to roll out a waste management contract, PPP contract, uh, even for local government, let's take the local government, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, imagine how many trucks you would need mm -hmm. for that activity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know any individual Gambian that would have that many trucks mm -hmm. individually. Mm -hmm. So the issue of coming together, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> collaborating as mm -hmm. private sector, mm -hmm. to be able to put offers on the table mm -hmm. that, that are meaningful and that can be. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are challenges on, on both sides. Uh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simple things like waste collection is not rocket science. You know, you are not taking anyone to the moon. Mm -hmm. Simple things, but mm -hmm. it requires capacity. It requires mm -hmm. having trucks. It requires you know planning. It mm -hmm. requires administration and it all these it things. Would, so it would seem from your from your from your intervention and from the points that you are making that perhaps there is a dire need. And I know one was done um, in 2018. Actually, I think around the time that the NDP was launched where the private sector was invited to discuss the opportunities that would be forthcoming under a public-private partnership mm -hmm. um, framework. But um, perhaps, um, and I'm asking this question given the points that you have raised, um, should this be ongoing, maybe once every quarter? Yes. From your um, 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 directorate, yeah. in which people would be told that, look, uh, this is what we are looking at doing going forward. These are our plans, these are our intentions. But the realities are, under the PPP guidelines, under the PPP framework, under the PPP law, yeah, in order for you as private players to participate, such capacities, competencies, you know, must be in place. Mm -hmm. And that being the case, you need to start thinking how to come collectively in order mm -hmm. to, to take advantage mm -hmm. of this. No. I mean, should that, should that, no, and no, you, is that something that I, I mean, your, your directorate should put I, together? I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been having these forums in close collaboration with Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, whether we can do it every quarter, mm -hmm. you know, the demand on, on our time is also mm -hmm. uh, high. Mm -hmm. But at least, I, I believe, at least once or twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, that may be feasible. Mm -hmm. And I think this validation next month is a good opportunity mm -hmm. for private sector to look into the law mm -hmm. and also we'll, we'll hope to present the projects mm -hmm. uh, during this forum mm -hmm. uh, that are available mm -hmm. and what they can do to come together. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, uh, uh, like I said, we, we, I believe in uh, uh, you know, the, the philosophy of trying to make Gambian millionaires, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not, not keeping the money home to build the state. That's, mm -hmm. that's the way forward. Mm -hmm. But are we, are we organizing ourselves optimally? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. Both in, on the government side and also on the private sector mm -hmm. side. You know, both sides. Uh, we are not, but, but hopefully, hopefully, I mean, uh, it's not just us. In Africa, everyone, part, we are part of the, myself, I'm part of the Africa PP network. Mm -hmm. So it's only a few countries that are really running fast. Everyone else is almost where we are. Mm -hmm. Because the same issues, they have to change cultures, they have to change thinking mm -hmm. minds and, and mm -hmm. skills and you know, processes. And, uh, mm -hmm. So we are, we are not alone, but we need to move fast. Yeah. We've seen the examples in Senegal, mm -hmm. the toll roads, the airports, mm -hmm. and uh, it is possible. Mm -hmm. But I think the, I'm really excited in Gambia, uh, PPP, uh, especially with <laughs> the advent of the bridge, mm -hmm. uh, I think, is an eye opener for everyone to to know mm -hmm. uh, that yes, tolling is possible. And now there's a national tolling policy which we've developed mm -hmm. uh, for toll roads in Gambia. It never was never there. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that a few other toll roads that have already been airmarked mm -hmm. will jump, kickstart, and with those toll revenues, we can build more roads and and build the state. Mm -hmm. But again, one 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 thing that we also working with our partners, mm -hmm. the likes of NRA mm -hmm. and Ministry of Works, mm -hmm. is uh, you know, having a national road master plan, mm -hmm. the interconnection on all these things. And thereafter, you see, planning is a key part of the game. If we plan right and mm -hmm. we, we do the right things, mm -hmm. then we'll see better results. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the, the Trans-Gambia Bridge. Um, I was going to come to that, but 
you've kick-started on it, and you even mentioned um, the tolls. And I think I read recently that um, small cars are being tolled, um, yeah. I think anywhere up to $250. Um, dollars. But down the line, there'll be a need to actually have the um, structure, you know. I and mean, when I say the fiscal infrastructure in terms of the tolling um, itself for uh, an effective um, I mean administration. But um, uh, when are we looking to have this? The bridge has been inaugurated. Yeah, um, yeah, the bridge yeah. in terms of cost, the Gambia, I believe um, last week I had um, 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 the director of budget here and he had you know, mentioned that um, X amounts have to be paid to the African Development Bank and I think it's a billion dollars here or so. So uh, government has put in some investment despite the fact that um, you know the bridge you know uh, I mean was funded by African Development Bank and I believe at concessionary some concessionary elements involved in it as well. But building the bridge is one thing, maintaining the bridge is another. And I think this is where the bit aspect regarding tools comes um, into play. So how far down the line would, I mean, are we expecting to see the fiscal infrastructure of the tolling um, to be instituted so that we would, people would begin to know that, yes, um, 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 this is a possibility in the Gambia and it's happening right now and yes, therefore uh, the chances of it happening on other roads mm, as mm. well. I mean, the, 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 the Jabang Jabangeli road, I mean, um, we should have a toll on that road. Mm. Excellent road, but it's been plied I mean, I'm one of the people that ply the road every day, and we would want it. To you, to no, I mean, <laughs> it's a good road. I mean, <laughs> from 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 Jabang yeah. Estate to the traffic lights takes me five six minutes. Yeah. When the road was in there, it would take me 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the maneuvering difficulties and challenges, and during the rains, forget it. You you, you couldn't even ply that road. But I mean, uh, it's a good road. We enjoy it, and therefore we should pay. Yeah. So um, no, it's not a matter of whether uh, I want yes, to pay. Yes. I must pay. Yeah, yes. And I think this is yes. um, 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 I mean where we need to head as a country yeah, so that yeah. we will have good infrastructure, road uh, infrastructure. I, I, I totally agree with mm -hmm. you. And this is spirit we welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really, people's it, it, development is not cheap, but we should be happy to contribute mm -hmm. so that we can have better roads and better infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the tolling uh, equipment at the bridge, all that is already paid for. It is expected that the FAT will be ready by within six months. Okay. Within six months. Uh, but not just Including that. Lightning. I, don't, I mean, is, is there lightning? I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All okay. those are part of the project. Project, okay. Uh, but the access routes also would need to be done. So mm -hmm. it would take a bit more time mm -hmm. you know, to build some of those roads. Mm -hmm. So we expect, we'll say, uh, one year to it before everything, all the systems are really ready mm -hmm. uh, to roll. Uh, or 18 months, mm -hmm. 18 months, mm -hmm. and that's why we are starting now uh, with Africa Legal Facility mm -hmm. to start this transaction advisory mm -hmm. and help get private sector in okay. by uh, end of two to three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but our desire is for this private sector to even be in local Gambia, mm -hmm. local. Local privacy. Yes. Yeah. You know, but we, you know, if people don't organize, if we don't start now mm -hmm. and organize ourselves mm -hmm. and think seriously about these projects and what, how we can mm -hmm. benefit, mm -hmm. then we would come back to the same issues. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you. I know that there has been a public outcry in Senegal um, as long as PPP projects are concerned. Um, you look at the um, the the highway that is done in Senegal, uh, you know, and um, the tolls, and people complain that the tolls are high, um, you know, in terms of cost, you know, um, uh, amongst other complaints, uh, I mean, as well. But uh, with PPP, and I'm glad that you've made, you're making the point that Gambians need to be aware of the fact that there are opportunities that exist within PPP, but they need to come together to create that mm -hmm. one company that has the financial muscle and leverage mm -hmm. to participate and the technical competences and capacities to participate. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if the company that drives the PPP project in country is almost exclusively foreign, then you expect nothing but for them to repatriate mm -hmm. profits mm -hmm. and them for them to charge um, 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 fees that would help them to recover their investments in the least possible time. And mm. this is what leads to some of these public outcries. So it is important that we as a country
pay attention to that as well so that we would not have public outcries in the country vis-a-vis mm. -vis some of these concessions that we are looking at um, um, I mean, um, I mean entering um, in the future. But uh, I, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about public enterprises or state-owned enterprises since your yeah. directorate is also yeah. um, so responsible but, but for but this as well. Before that point, mm. let me also mention uh, yeah. that uh, one of the projects that are being conceived right now mm -hmm. is the uh, uh, bypass between Steam Corner to Abuko. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, it's in the side to be told also. We have interest from big players mm -hmm. that want to build this project. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. It mm. will help to on big, big players as in uh, foreign players or foreign and local as well. Or, or foreign for now. Mainly foreign, foreign but, okay. but they have a, they have local counterparts. They have local counterparts. Okay. Uh, but this is I mean the reality is mm. for example, mm. I don't know of any serious government company that mm -hmm. does roads roads building. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I totally agree. You know, so yeah. uh, you know, these are the issues. Mm. I mean but the local content bit perhaps is what we need to look at because um I mean you I mean you're hundred percent right and um, I think um, I mean uh, the, the first episode of this program, uh, which um, aired in April of last year, mm -hmm. I invited um, um, a consultant um, from GAP Consultants, Mr. Saar, I mean, who is in the mm. business of, you know, I mm. mean, engineering and stuff, mm. civil engineering. Mm. And um, I mean, at the time, he did mention that, um, yes, um, it's possible, I mean, it is true that perhaps a single Gambian is not able to undertake any major project um, uh, for example, road construction mm. or even, you know, um, 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 these mega, um, um, big, I mean, big buildings. Mm. But the point that he made, and I think the point, um, well, I mean, is spot on. And we have some Gambians who are actually endeavoring, you know, to become big players. I don't want to name names, but they are. But if we, um, and this was why I was asking, I mean, does the legal framework that is being developed, I mean, the PPP bill, um, does it provide for certain aspects of local content? I mean, if that is made mandatory, then don't underestimate however small that local content participation aspect of that bill would be. Over time, a period of five, ten years, we could actually see um, 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 these local players becoming big players. You know, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question of providing with opportunities so that if you have a hundred million yeah, dollar yeah, yeah, project, yeah. for example, if two million dollars or three million or five million dollars goes to the local partners, mm -hmm. trust me, they would build themselves up to ensure that down the line they're able to increase and up their I game agree. in terms of level of participation. So the local I content agree. aspect I is very important. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So uh, we, we'll again we'll expect your feedbacks on mm -hmm. the law on these things and how to still a draft. We mm -hmm. hope to validate it, get mm -hmm. the optimal law mm -hmm. that works for all Gambians. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I think um, at this stage I would want to, I mean, um, appeal to viewers who have interest in this to also come to your ministry and yes. request for the draft bill yeah, so yes. that they could review it and give their input. Uh, yes. Because once yes. it's yeah. um, validated as a bill yeah. and then it's passed into law, that's it. You mm. probably it will probably take another two, three years Absolutely. before people would review it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But coming back to yeah. um, the public enterprises. Mm. Um, you mentioned that the um, PPP bill and the SOE bill, uh, well, you, you mentioned the PPP bill, mm. uh, and I'm sure it would go in tandem with the SOE bill, um, that these would be validated next month, um, around the 19th. No, the no, no, no. The, the, the <coughs> state-owned enterprises bill mm -hmm. uh, was actually validated okay. in October. Now, this is the background. Mm -hmm. uh, when this issue of SOE oversight mm -hmm. was handed to us. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing we did was engage our partners, the World Bank, and say that uh, we need a compre comprehensive diagnostics mm -hmm. of the sector mm -hmm. uh, to understand what the issues are and come up with a roadmap mm -hmm. or action plan for the reform, mm -hmm. to inform the reform game. So uh, that study was concluded mm -hmm. uh, around July mm -hmm. uh, 2016, I believe, mm -hmm. and then finalized in December. Mm -hmm. So but the, the findings we are telling, mm -hmm. I mean, the issues of 5% fiscal bailouts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, contingent mm -hmm. liabilities, $1.7 uh, billion, mm -hmm. duty waivers, $1.4 billion. Mm -hmm. So it was telling, right? We we took the conclusions of that mm -hmm. uh, country policy note, mm -hmm. 
These, uh, are, these are things that the SOEs were doing that ordinarily they should not have done. I mean, am, am, am I understanding no, it's, correctly? No, it's a diagnostics was an analysis, in-depth analysis of what the issues are, especially the financial situation of the SOEs, uh, of the state enterprise, okay. the okay. sector. Mm -hmm. uh, what came out was government bailout to NAWEC mm -hmm. in 2015 was almost 5% of GDP. Gee, wow. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, duty waiver was 1.7, mm -hmm. uh, contingent liabilities 1.4 billion, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Mm. So, and then, a lot of issues, right? Issues of, well, you know, recommendations on what, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. How we need to professionalize boards. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. How we need to normalize the relationship between the state and the enterprise. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, corporate governance and mm -hmm. so on and mm -hmm. so on. So we took the conclusions of that uh, paper uh, by the World Bank mm -hmm. to cabinet. Mm -hmm. And cabinet endorsed. Uh, they, they see the light mm -hmm. uh, and, and sense in what was being recommended mm -hmm. and they are proofed that we implement the three-year reform plan. Mm -hmm. So in this three-year reform plan, uh, like I said, we, this is what we are doing, mm -hmm. uh, the unit, uh, the oversight unit under my directorate. Mm -hmm. We have an SOE oversight unit. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've come afar, mm -hmm. we've developed code of good corporate governance for all public enterprises mm -hmm. uh, to address issues of how people are appointed mm -hmm. in the boards. Mm -hmm. It should be based on merit and routine based on performance, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. But the, you know, the challenges are very many. Mm -hmm. For example, until we start p putting in all these reform blocks, you'll be surprised to know that you know it was <laughs> standard practice mm -hmm. for you to get a letter that says Benjamin Roberts, mm -hmm. board member of now mm -hmm. end of story. Mm -hmm. No terms of reference, mm -hmm. no induction training, mm -hmm. and no training ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever. Mm -hmm. So we <laughs> we've come up with uh, standard appointment letters, we mm -hmm. come up with board charters, mm -hmm. uh, we come up with a code of good practice. Mm -hmm. And for that, do that, we don't just do that, we have trained mm -hmm. 90 of the 13 commercial state enterprises, they are board members, 90 in number, mm -hmm. on good corporate governance mm -hmm. in 2018 April. Mm -hmm. So uh, why am I saying this? Now beyond this, you raise the issue of the law, mm -hmm. but beyond this, again, we want to move from principles mm -hmm. to having it, it, all these reform and these needed steps, mm -hmm. we need to spend them mm -hmm. in the form of an act. Mm -hmm. uh, there was what was called the Public Enterprise Act 1990, Mm -hmm. Good act, but we all know, mm -hmm. 1990 realities and today's realities mm -hmm. are not the same. Mm -hmm. A lot <coughs> has changed. Mm -hmm. So we, we, again, with support from World Bank, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, hired the services of a consultant from mm -hmm. Canada mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who reviewed the old act mm -hmm. as well as all the individual acts affecting public enterprises like the Social Security Act, the Post Act, mm -hmm. and then help come up with all the relevant laws and come up with this new mm -hmm. state-owned enterprise act, what we call the state-owned enterprise bill. Mm -hmm. And this bill was validated uh, in October mm -hmm. uh, at a high level forum. Actually, it was chaired by the Secretary General mm -hmm. and Minister of Presidential Affairs, Mr. Ibrahim Akamara. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, our own minister was also there, mm -hmm. uh, Mambu mm -hmm. as well as the chairman of Public Service Commission, mm -hmm. and all the board directors across the public enterprise, board chairs, mm -hmm. MDs, company mm -hmm. secretaries. Mm -hmm. Very interactive forum, mm -hmm. and we are still uh, trying to solicit final comments and finalize it. But yes, you're right, we are hoping to put past board bills at least uh, first quarter or latest second, second quarter of this year mm -hmm. and, and to help cement all the gains. For example, one of the gaps that was identified mm -hmm. in the public 1990 Public Enterprise Act mm -hmm. was that uh, it was very s silent on sanctions. Mm -hmm. If NAVIC don't do what is required, you don't can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. tell them so, so the issue of those are, these are all things that Again, uh, you know, and, and a key message, the key takeaway for me in that mm -hmm. validation workshop mm -hmm. uh, was the message that the Secretary General rolled out, rolled out call that says we have to be the transforming generation of this country. Mm -hmm. A very important message. Mm -hmm. now, if we miss this opportunity, mm -hmm. 
you know, we would never, you know, we can forget about it. We have the perfect setting to transform, and this is this is, this is what we're working towards. Perhaps the last question, um, considering the time is almost um, I mean gone, um, uh, the last question I want to ask is: We welcome and we encourage and we are comforted by the steps that your directorate and the ministry is taking to address these challenges that we know are real at the level of the SOEs. And I'm sure within this work that you guys are doing, that performance-based um, contracts would also mm -hmm. come about so that at least state-owned enterprises would begin to give to government instead of government Absolutely. bailing out Absolutely. you know, um, uh, I mean the SOEs. Yeah. But in terms of the appointments of the board, because you mentioned one of the key pillars of the NDP revolves around governance. Mm. And one of the key <coughs> challenges that has um, um, been a problem for SOEs is the issue of governance. And here governance, I want to restrict it to the issue of board of directors. Now, I understand everything you've said in terms of what you're going to do to ensure that gov I mean, uh, the governance structure, board of directors, um, 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 you know, adapt best practice from the issue of giving appointment letters providing terms of references and providing the requisite training for the board members to know what is it that they're supposed to do and what their responsibilities are, where their mandate stops and where their mandate um, I mean, I mean starts. But how are we going to address the issue regarding politics in the appointment of board of directors? Because we know, and it's a fact, that sometimes the appointment of boards are done not on basis of merits but because of political patronage. Would that be a challenge? Do you foresee that as being a challenge or would this government um, and any other government for that matter in the future as per the provisions of the SOE um, bill that would ultimately become law, would it be respected to the point where politics would stay away and allow efficiency to play? Uh, good point. Uh, first, one of the, the okay, the, the, the reform, uh, the bill is designed in such a way that there will be this uh, state commission, you know, will graduate to become a commission. Mm -hmm. and, and within this commission, uh, you will have what is called a public service appointment secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like a department whose sole function will be to, uh, first of all, establish a database of people with the right competencies mm -hmm. and also vetting all these appointments mm -hmm. and making sure that you know, this is, we get the right people. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we profile everyone, mm -hmm. all the rules. Mm -hmm. Now, the good thing is, like I said, now uh, following the board trainings and the board chatters, it's become clearer, if into board members, what their role is, what they need to do, how they should do it. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, uh, the next step is what you're just saying, exactly that, the appointment process. Mm -hmm. How do we go about it? Uh, in Botswana, for example, they advertise these boss positions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way you want to go do that in Gambia, we discussed that at the validation mm -hmm. workshop. Mm -hmm. And the feedback was that people will not apply mm -hmm. for these posts properly. So we're better off having this public service appointment secretary mm -hmm. that would take care of that, that political issues. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a professional agency that will look at Mm. You know, what is needed in the board would be savvy, what skill sets are available and profile people and recommend based on those things. Mr. Sabate, yes. thank you very much. We have to leave it at that time has really run out, but it's a pleasure to have you on the Business and Economy Program and I wish you the very best of success at the PPP and PE Directorate at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, 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 you. thank you. Well, viewers, thank you very much. This was all we had for you today. Thank you, and do follow us on social media, QTV Gambia. Thank you for now. Islamic Bank in the Gambia. We offer Sharia compliance services, products and financing modes. 
Ajib have invested in ultra-modern technology in the state-of-the-art core Islamic banking software Aymal. Ajib ATMs are located in our branches at Banjul, New Joshuan, Brikama, Basse, Qsel Head Office and Busubi Turntable. You can check your balance, withdraw cash, get your mini statement and much more. Ajib also provides 24-7 internet banking which offers you the comfort of banking from your office or your homes. Come and visit the new Ajib Bank today and enjoy our services delivered by a team of banking professionals. For a limited time, you can get an Ajib ATM card absolutely free. For more information, contact us on 346-6666 or 327-7777. Ajib, your partnership bank. 